This is an overview of the content carousel widget by Unlimited Elements for Elementor. Let's get started. To get started with the content carousel, I'm going to search for content carousel in the widgets pane and drag and drop the widget into my canvas. The content carousel is an interactive carousel with arrows and bullets to allow users to navigate between the different slides. I'm going to take you over the settings and show you how you can adjust this to make an awesome carousel for your website. So the first option is for layout. And as you can see right now, it's set to under, so the content is under. I'm going to set that to overlay just to show you another example of how you can take advantage of the layouts over here. And now when I hover over each item, it's showing the overlay. Let's put that back to back to under and you can play around with all the different layouts to achieve different kinds of design. Right now as you can see if I want to navigate I need to click the arrows. If I want this to be automatic I can turn the autoplay to true and now it will navigate automatically every five seconds and why I'm saying five seconds is because over here it's set to 5,000. So if I just set that to 2,000 now it's going to be every two seconds and this will be much more faster just for example purposes i think 5000 is a good default so most use, most use cases would use 5000 over here we have another option to autoplay hover pause that means when i hover over it with my mouse cursor the carousel is pausing and letting the user read the content so this is kind of a common setting that users will most likely leave on. So that's what that does. And we can align the content. So I could align it to the left, to the center, or to the right. Of course, this is a responsive settings. Anything that will be or make sense to be responsive will have this icon over here. You can see it also over here. So for example, if I want to show instead of three items, which are showing right now, I'm going to show only two items. And now I can see only two items, and this is a responsive field. So you can set the number of items on tablet, on mobile, whatever you need. Let's turn off the autoplay so I can continue showing you guys this awesome features. And the next feature is for margin between items. So this is a space over here, and I can make that space bigger. So let's change that from 20 pixels to 50 pixels. And now you can see how that looks like. Another option is for loop. So right now, if I'm going to reach the end of the slides, it's going to continue. It's sort of like an infinite scroll. It's always scrolling. But if I turn off loop, what it's going to do is not let me scroll once I've reached the last item. So that's what loop does. And offset type and center are kind of similar. Let me show you first of all center. Now this works best with an even amount of items. So I'm just gonna turn on center. And now what you will see is instead of showing two items, it's showing half of the first item, the full middle item, and half of the last item. So that's kind of a cool effect. A lot of people like using this on a full width website. So that's for center, let's turn that back on. And another setting is for offset. So there are three types of offset, or more likely four. So none, that's the default state. Both sides, it's kind of like center, but now I can determine exactly how many pixels I want to cut off from each side. So right now let's put something bigger than 50, just so we can see 20 pixels from each slide, or let's even do 90 pixels just so you can see that and maybe make the margin a little bit smaller. So what it's doing, it's hinting the user that there's more slides over here. Another cool thing that you can do is actually add an offset just from one side. So let's offset this just from the right side. It's 
it's going to offset it 90 pixels. And now you can see it just hinting from the right side over here. And as I mentioned earlier, this will look really good if I make this full width. So let's make this full width. And let's add a column over here, add a new column. And let's move this column to the right side. Awesome. And awesome, this is looking already awesome. The next thing I'll do is I'll just go into the column settings, edit column, and in padding, I'm going to reset that to zero just because I want it to sort of touch over here at the end. Now I'll need to refresh the widget to see that, but before that, I'm just going to resize this a little bit. So I kind of have a one third and two third layout. Now to refresh the widget in the editor, what you can do is just turn on or off any settings. So you can just turn on or off loop or autoplay or stuff like that. And now you can see how awesome that is. So that's pretty cool. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, show you guys the layout. So over here in layout, we can turn on or off each part. So for example, if I have a carousel without images, I can just turn off the image part. And now I have just a content sort of carousel. And another thing I can do is turn off the buttons. If I don't need links for each slide, I can turn off the button. And I can turn off the content, which is the intro over here. I might not need that. So you can turn on or off every single part, including the arrows and the dots. So those are pretty awesome. Inside of the arrow section, we can change the icons for the arrows. And inside of items we actually manage the content so to manage the content you can expand one of these and you can just input your content you have a title some content and the button which is button text and a button link of course you can use the dynamic tags if you have an advanced link each item can be duplicated so over here inside of items I can duplicate an item I can delete an item and I can add new items. So that's pretty straightforward. The next part I want to show you guys is the connected widget settings. So over here we can do two things. One of them is enable remote connection, which works with any of our remote widgets. And the other is to sync with another widget. So what I'm going to show you guys is how I use remote controls. So let's just add remote controls over here. And I'm going to add three types of remote controls. The first one is going to be remote arrows. I'm just going to write over here remote and add that to my layout. And voila, it's connected. So this kind of gives us the ability to create advanced interactive layouts and place our arrows and design our arrows however we want. You can even just make a previous arrow or only a next arrow separate between the arrows and connect them both, make them horizontal or vertical, really cool stuff. The next one is going to be remote bullets. So let's just drag that inside. And again, I'm just going to show you guys three of these, but there are actually an unlimited uh, number of these. I mean, there's something like six or seven types. And I'm going to turn on show counter that will add a number inside of each of these. By the way, you can see it's already working. The only thing I need to do now is control the size. So I'm just going to make it 20 pixels by 20 pixels. And the active bullet, I'll make 20 pixels. And let's just make it even wider when it's active. So we have kind of a GUI effect over here. So this is pretty awesome. And the last one I'm going to show just real quickly is the remote counter. This is an indication for users to see on which slide they are on. So right now you can see we're on slide one from four. And when I navigate, this updates over here. So to make that look good, I'm going to, yeah, let's go into the settings, align that to the start. And inside of the style, what I'll do is I'll make the current one a lot bigger. So something like that just so it will look cool. And now it's already looking awesome. 
So what remote widgets does, it gives you the ability to kind of make cool layouts. Of course, over here in the column, I could go into vertical and align this into the middle just so that nice aligns nicely. Now we can turn off the bullets over here because we have bullets over here. So that's inside of layout. So let's turn off the dots and now this will be aligned even better. So really awesome. Last thing I want to show is that over here inside of items, you can use a different content source. So right now the source is content, but you could even load an Elementor template. That means if you have Elementor Pro, you just create a new template, add whatever you want to that template that could be forms, maps, whatever you want. And then you have the ability to choose a template over here. For example, if I want to load more than one button, so I can just load these, this template with two buttons. And now I have two buttons instead of just one by loading a template over here. So that's pretty awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next video.